Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another Friday vlog of mine. Another Friday has caught up with us people. Yes, it has. A really gloomy, miserable, windy, rainy, everything you don't want in weather apart from snow. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm doing fine. Flaggons up to you all. Oh, you should all just batten down the hatches and get some of these, well, go to the shop, get some of these beverages in. If you don't like flaggons, get something else and just batten down the hatches and stay home for the weekend. Uh, I was I, I was clever enough to go and do my my little weekly shop yesterday evening. So I got that out of the way. And so today I just needed to pick up a few beers for the flagons up Friday, people, because you have to have them. And uh, yeah, so I, I, that's me. I'm batten down for the weekend until such time as the weather decides to not be so bloody awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just horrible people anyway we do have things to talk about people i didn't even get my run in today i'm supposed to do a run on a friday i don't know people i don't know i've got two in this week though i've got one on sunday and one on tuesday got a swim in a monday so there's been a little bit of a what to get two day gap there and then i've got uh sunday i'll do i'll try it if the weather sorts itself out i'll try and do a run and a swim on sunday but that was the first two Sunday there was the first week I'd got back after being ill. That was my first run back. I think I said to you in the last flagons up Friday that I was, wasn't looking forward to that. It's hard work after two weeks off, but I did all right, to be fair. It was a slow time, and my legs were killing me the day after, but I still managed to do a day to, a run two days later on the Tuesday, which was two minutes better, and then you know I was back in the flow of it at that point. So I'm a bit disappointed I couldn't go out running today. So I just need to sort out... The, I I was a member of the of the, where the pool is and a member of where my gym was that I haven't been using because I've not been doing gym, I've been doing swimming and running. But there is a gym at the swimming pool. So I went and saw that about a week ago. I cancel, I've cancelled my membership at the gym for now. Not that they've done anything wrong. It's just that it's not as as handy as it was because of me working from rem working remotely sometimes and the pool being so handy and you know so it's not and i because i'm doing the running and the swimming it's like that's enough like i don't need to be spending hours in a gym as well and i'm feeling really good like i've been watching i've been watching what i eat a lot through the week so i've been keeping my calorie count really really tight through the week and then i just do what i want from friday where i have my flagons Saturday, I just have what I like. And then Sunday, Sunday's not as bad as the rest of the week, but I still keep my calorie count well under what I burn. Because I burn a lot on a Sunday anyway. So uh, I'm feeling really good with, with the swimming and the running and, and that calorie watching. I don't feel the need to be... I, I, I've never really wanted to be like buff and big. I just want to be slim and wherever I can tone, I'll tone. And swimming and running kind of hopefully it's it's do well i feel like it's doing the business for me so i'm going to stick with that for now however if i can't run outside it, to join the gym at the pool which is a smaller one but it's still got pretty much everything i would need uh and it's got if i can't run outside it's got treadmills so i could just dive around there it's two minutes around the corner i could dive around there and just run on the treadmill for for a bit instead so i might sort that out it's an extra it's an extra tenner Considering it's a full-size swimming pool and they've got a kids' pool there as well, so it's it's like everything's really well spread out, and you know that's eighteen ninety nine unlimited access, and well, it, it's certain times that have got the lane swimming and stuff, but you can go as many times as you want when that's free, and that's eighteen ninety nine a month, and then to get the to get the gym on top of well full all access membership is twenty nine ninety nine I think, so. You know, it's an extra tenner to, not eleven pound, but an extra tenner, say, to get everything, as opposed to I was paying twenty five for the gym and, and eighteen ninety nine for that, so I'm still saving money. But yeah, I think I'll do that because I think it gives me the freedom to do it, and it's not just a pass for that centre; it's a pass for the other centre, which is up at Stanley Park, which has a big climbing wall apparently and everything in it. So I may well give that a whirl at some point if I get the full membership. So, yeah, so that's my plan at the minute. Anyway, I've digressed somewhat there about running and exercise people, but you know, it's good to talk about these things. You know, we are gamers, we tend not to move an awful lot. So, <laughs> exercise, I always find that my gaming, I enjoy my gaming far more if I'm balancing it with healthy exercise or just healthy outdoors stuff. Uh, it's too much to be inside all of the time. 
you always feel this burst of, especially when I do running, like the endorphins just, my brain just springs into life with, you know, nice thoughts and and a happy feeling. If you you stay inside too much, especially if I'm, I mean, at my, my job, I'm sat at a desk or I'm sat at home, depending on where I am at the time, all day just coding. And then if I just game as well without doing anything else, that's just inside all of the time. So exercise is is an absolute must for the well-being of my my mind. So healthy body, healthy mind, people. That's how it works. Uh, healthy mind, not necessarily healthy body, but <laughs> the other way around, you know. Healthy my healthy body, healthy mind, people. That's it. Right, should we crack on with some gaming talk? I do have some things to talk about. And there's a few things that have popped into my... my, my my what was I going to say there <laughs> my gaming thoughts through the week and before I get into those just a very quick thing when the whole YouTube uh, FTC nightmare began I freaked out well I didn't freak out I sensibly thought I need another place where I can do what I do in case I need to shut the channel down and I feel like things have settled down a little bit now and I'm, I'm, I didn't see the need to keep doing the Facebook page. If so if anyone was following the Facebook page, I've taken it away now. I'm just going to keep doing the YouTube stuff. To be honest, it, because I mean, it, would, it might have been something I would have kept if I had gone totally over to Facebook and just not bothered with, you know, and just done shorter snippets and stuff like that and not bothered with YouTube anymore. But I really didn't want to do that anyway. But if that's what it came to, then maybe I'd revive something. But I've, the, the page is gone. I've deleted it now. And we'll just focus on YouTube, which is where we wanted to do it in the first place. So that's gone. So don't worry if you've lost the link and wonder what the hell's happened. I don't have the page anymore. Uh, on top of that, if anyone was following me on Twitter, I no longer have Twitter. I decided to get rid of it. I've been, I've had very conscious thoughts about the amount of time that I spend. Like, it's become very, uh, I've become very aware of the amount of time I'm spending looking at things like social media rather than reading a book or spending more time doing recording or, you know, just playing a game myself or whatever or going out. But, I, I'm getting very, very conscious of it, and I'm not overly happy with the stuff that I see on social media either. There's a lot of good people out there, but there is so much there is so much negativity. Like I can't remember a time I went onto a social media platform and didn't find something that irritated me, just from somebody being just saying something completely silly and just being like it really like it. It makes me think that people that, that the world is just full of complete fucking idiots. You know. It's like, <laughs> It really does. Like I, 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 I'm of the mind at the moment, and I'm not including YouTube in this because YouTube's a kind of a different animal for me. But social media is just the most evil thing in the world for me at the minute. It really is. From from the way that it's they're run, from the way that they use your data, to the way that people can use them to just say and do whatever they want without much of a repercussion, and just hurt people's feelings or make people feel shitty. And it just like it doesn't matter how many times it that things happen. Like you know, we all know about the the, the poor girl that killed herself over the week, uh, Caroline Flack. You know, it doesn't matter how many instances like that happen. People don't learn, and they keep doing stupid things online from the from the media to people that are just cowards that hide behind tweets. You know, they would never say these things to your face. You know, absolute cowards. And I, I just, I find the whole thing, um, it's just become very, very poisonous. And I, I don't, I don't, every time I come off of it, I don't feel like I've gained anything from it. So the only platform I've still got is YouTube. And the only one outside of that I've still got is Facebook. And I already left Facebook once. And I went back to Facebook, what was that, a year ago, maybe a year and a half, something like that. Um, the problem with leaving Facebook wasn't, that I missed social media, it was the fact that there were people on it that I connect with that I couldn't connect with any other way. A prime example is people that I, I when I gave up smoking ooh, nearly nine years ago, people, nine years, woohoo, go me. Um, 
I joined uh, the Livestrong sort of chat group and stuff on on that site, and it was it was for non-smokers to to chat to each other, try and help each other through the struggling moments. Met loads of people on there, and some really really nice people that I want to keep in touch with. And when I, it wasn't until I left Facebook, I suddenly realised that I had no other way of communicating with them. We used to have uh, a goo. What was it called? G plus. We used to have G plus because that's where we started talking to each other, and then it kind of shifted from there to Facebook because G plus they decided not to do it anymore and got rid of it, which was, was Google's equivalent to Facebook. So I, until I kind of find some other way of, of keeping in touch with these people, I don't know what else I'm going to do, but I really like Facebook is probably the most evil of them all. And I just, I resent the fact that I'm kind of forced onto it because I don't want to lose touch with these people. So I need to have a good think about it. So basically at the moment I've got Facebook, to, to be fair, I only use Facebook other than the page that I had up for a little bit. I only use Facebook for family and friends. I don't use it for, the, not that you're not my friends people, but I don't, I don't, use it as something to to promote this platform which is youtube it's just something i i use for people that i connect with that are family and friends so so yeah so that's where i am so don't worry if you were following me on twitter and i'm not there anymore and you think i've unfollowed you i haven't i don't have a twitter account anymore and um, don't worry if you were following the facebook page because that's gone so there we are we've said and done it people that's been 12 minutes and i've still not said anything about gaming yet <laughs> i'm gonna have a few sips of this shall i before we get going flagons up to you all once again so we have, while I'm sipping this, <laughs> before I get proper going, we've been doing recording this week, people. You have seen on the channel, my Let's Plays are thriving this week. I say Let's Plays, so let's play. <laughs> Chaos Bane was what kicked it off. I did two parts of that a week ago. Dragon Age Inquisition seems to have taken over. I've just got a real, I've just got really into it, so I just kept going. And I got a lot recorded this week. So you've got, you've got epi everything that's posted up. Get on with the sip. Everything that's posted up, we'll see you through till Monday. So I've recorded, uh, part 19 went up today, I think. And then it's part 20 tomorrow, part 21 on Sunday, and part 22 on Monday. They're already uploaded. They're already scheduled to just be live at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow, 9 o'clock on Sunday, and 9 uh, in the morning, and 11 o'clock in the morning on Monday. So you'll get all of those. They're all coming and there was a fresh one today. So you've got loads to get through people. And then I'll try and record more Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and post them up through the week. So yeah, so I've just, I, I did, normally I do like a massive lump and then kind of leave it, post them up and so on. But I did kind of three and then I did, I think when I did the Astrarium stuff, I, I spent ages trying to do one episode because I struggled with the Astrarium. Things like that can kind of hold you back. But I just, I found it, I just landed recording three times this week. So I did sort of, you know, for you one night, for you another, for you another. And last night's episode, the one you'll get on Monday, ended up being about an hour and 20 minutes long because I just wanted to see through the Falmire area and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I'm thoroughly enjoying playing that game again. I'm having a right good time with it. And... It's funny, the, the, the amount I've remembered about that game is outweighing, I think, the amount I've forgotten. Not so much as, you know, I, not so much as exact, precise where things are, but more the areas and what, what you know, like the desert area we're about to go into, being level two uh, or tier two metals and, and skins and stuff like that so yeah I'm, I'm uberly stoked to get in there and get stuck in i am i am finding again though and i found this when whatever whatever character you go as you seem to find hardly any <laughs> of the schematics you actually need for that character and it i've noticed this when i played it on the ps4 like you'll find a gazillion schematics for everybody else that you're not, but the, any character that you type that you pick, you don't find as many schematics for, which is a bit disappointing. It kind of defeats the purpose of being able to, you know, I mean, I'm still waiting for a, one of the, the, the schematic for the level two, uh, tier two armor, which uh, is kind of the scout armor rather than, I, I did find this playthrough, anyone who's watched it, uh, not sure if you've got that far yet, but there's an episode where I put, uh, armor together that i'd never worn before one of them i ran around in for a while it was like it looked really cool but it wasn't till i made it i, I realized that in fact i don't think there was any top on the woman 
It was literally, she was just top half, was just covered in muddy paint stuff. It was like a warrior type thing. Um, so we wore that for like an episode, but it was tier two and it was it was nice. But I, ev- I eventually picked up an outfit that was scout armor. I didn't make it myself. I just picked it up and it was tier two, I think. So, and it's the same with the bow. I've got a tier two bow, I think, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm struggling to get anything sort of, uh, exciting to drop weapon wise at all uh, I haven't I don't think I've picked a bow up in the whole game uh, I might have picked up a few basic ones but anything I've not picked up a decent bow anywhere but every now and then I'll find like a an uber sword or an uber shield or an uber something for another character but the, not nothing in the bow which is what I am uh, it's like loads of daggers keep popping up if I'd gone a dagger character I bet you there's bows everywhere it's almost like they did it on purpose to force you into the crafting and which is fine but if you're going to do that then make sure that I find the schematics for whatever it is I want to craft for my character but I'm surprised it's not been patched to be honest oh that was good people oh that was a big gulp that oh right Alex let's do it cool blimey that was a big gulp right Oh, it was nice, though. It was cold as well. Oh, that hit a spot, people, it did. Right, so Let's Plays. We're on with Let's Plays. And at the moment, I still want to go back to Chaos Bane, but I'm just enjoying Dragon Age so much that I may well just go back into Dragon Age. We'll see how, we'll see how we go. If I get the buzz, I'll, I'll put some Chaos Bane. I'll throw some Chaos Bane into the mix. I know, I know a few of you were excited about me doing some more Chaos Bane. I will do some more. But uh, I tend to, at this moment in time, I tend to go with what I'm feeling I'm enjoying Right, I don't want to make work of it or I'll go off the idea again. <laughs> Take me this long to get back in at Let's Plays, people. So anyway, so there'll be plenty more of that coming. You've got Let's Plays coming every day all the way through to Monday. And on some point through Sunday and Monday, I'll probably have recorded some more and then I can post some more up from Tuesday onwards. So there we go. And social media we've talked about. And... Yeah, okay. So we'll talk about this thing first. For, yeah, we'll talk about the PlayStation Five first. So I've seen I've seen a few articles popping up all over the place with regards to uh, PlayStation is struggling to keep the costs down for the PS Five, and it's all to do with this and it's all to do with that and blah blah blah. The components they can't get them at the cheap enough prices. Blah blah blah, which means it's going to be a lot more expensive at launch than than they want it to be. So basically, what they're saying is. They're, they've got it into their heads now, the whole world's got it into their heads, that a console when it launches has to be $400 or less. Because if there's any more than that, then you failed, people. <laughs> you failed! Now, I mean, that's fine. Uh, I would argue that, you know, $400 for what we're already getting, like, I mean, in fact, it's not even $400 now or uh, what... I'm talking in dollars and, you know, a lot of you will be Eng- Englanders or Scotlanders or Britainers, should we call them. And, I mean, I would say, I'm trying to remember now what the price of the X is at the minute. But the Xbox One X isn't isn't $400 anymore. I think it's like 350 or something. So for what we're getting, for that amount of money, if you tried to buy a PC with these sort of specs, you'd be paying a lot more than that. And especially when these things come out, you'd be paying a shed ton more money than that for a pc to do exactly the same thing so we're getting like even if the playstation came out and it was 500 dollars to do what they wanted to do if you compared it to a like for like pc with the same power i bet you any money the pc would still be a gazillion well not a gazillion pounds more but it'll be a, it'd be a lot more expensive than the console so i i, I think there's a there's only a worry from a company's perspective because they don't want to put off the, I don't want to say lower end of the market, that's a bit harsh, but people that can't afford that sort of money straight off the bat, uh, but want to take to be involved in the launch of a new console product, which is why Xbox seem to be going with a series rather than just one box. The one we've seen is going to, we think the one we've seen is going to be the Uber one, which is going to be 12 teraflops and you know Uber, Uber this, Uber that. And there'll be one that sits below it, which will probably match what PlayStation are doing, which is the 9, 9.2 teraflops or 9.5 teraflops, whatever it was, uh, which is still mega Uber, but just not as Uber as this top of the range one that, that Phil Spencer wants to do. But Phil Spencer is doing that because he said 
the, I mean, he said it for a long time now. He wants Xbox to be and be back to being the most powerful console in the universe. And that's exactly what he's going to make happen this gen. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. Because I think he knew that he wouldn't be able to pull that off without doing a couple of versions. Because in order to provide the most powerful console in the world, you're going to have to produce one that's a little bit lesser than that, that you can push to people that aren't that bothered about being the most powerful, just wants it to be as powerful as the equal one next to it. So I get it. It's almost like releasing the Xbox One and the Xbox One X at the same time. I get it. I understand. And I think it's a brilliant idea. Uh, and I don't, you know, I'm surprised it's taken this long, really, in the world of consoles to come up with, with what we're doing at the minute. Especially when you consider that the Xbox 360 and the PS3 were around for as long as they were. Uh, they could easily have, you know, but I think, to be fair, I think they wanted to change architectures, especially PS3. I mean, they, they dumped their own, you know, research and development and they just went with industry standard components and all this sort of stuff uh, rather than try to do their own thing, which just caused havoc for everybody. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, get, I get all of that. What I don't understand is why... There is no talk of Xbox struggling with component parts and matching this price. I mean, if they're if they're I, I can't imagine they're buying all their components in the states. I I assume that the PlayStation uh, are reliant on China. There's obviously the the big virus outbreak, which is affecting so many things at the minute. <clears throat> um, you know, workplaces are closed transportation's down you know there's all sorts going on with the coronavirus and i can understand why that's impacting sony but i can't understand why that's not impacting microsoft because microsoft must source components from over there they can't be making them all in america i mean you know the the amd and and well i don't know they, yeah they are amd i'm sure they're amd processors but anyway i i don't know i mean I, i'm not 100 percent sure where everything's made but I would have thought that Microsoft have to be reliant on China to some regard. Uh, if not, certainly they're reliant on Japan, which is where PlayStation will be getting nearly everything from. So I don't quite understand it. Certainly the Xbox will have a Blu-ray player in it, and any Blu-ray player is going to be Sony because they own it. I mean, it's their product. So they have to be getting those from there. But when it, it, I think it's things like the SSD, the solid state disk and, and stuff, and, and those sort of components are making it far more expensive than it would be if they just put a standard hard drive in it. But they wanna, we want to break those boundaries of no loading screens or very minimal loading screens and stuff. So uh, I, I, I'm not understanding why it's something that's only impacting Sony and not impacting Microsoft. Or is it only because... My, you know, neither of those companies are going to make a product that that sells at a loss. And I think the way that things have worked in the past, they sell them for very little profit. So they'll make like $20 a box, but they'll make a gazillion pounds on everything else, whether it be your your monthly subscription or yearly subscriptions to the services like Xbox Gold or PlayStation Plus and the, the revenue they make off of all the games that come with it. That's where they make the box back in the short term and then in the long term, they make those bucks and then the, the cost of the components comes down and down and down and down and down. And then the more the boxes they sell later, I get they make more and more profit on. And that's how it's always kind of worked. But so, I mean, I don't think it's a I mean, if, if it's the problem is if Sony have to release a box at four hundred and fifty dollars because they can't keep the price down to four hundred dollars and Microsoft released their lower end one at $400, then you've got a problem. Because if their lower end one is the same as your one, then you're $50, you're $50 over the Xbox. Um, now, I don't think, personally, that's going to affect Sony players. Because I, I think... I think it'll, it might affect people that are... Well, I'll tell you why I don't think it's going to affect Sony players. Because... If they are backward compatible the way that they we think they're going to be backward compatible, both of these consoles, I can't see everybody just dumping their entire back catalogue to switch back over to Xbox. Because, like, why would you? You'd have to buy everything again if you wanted to play it on there. However, if you're someone that only plays COD or, you know, 
I don't know, PUBG or Fortnite or whatever. If you only play online games, Destiny, you only up, you update it or you buy it once a year effectively anyway, then you can shift and move your profile sometimes in some of these games and it won't matter. So, you know, you could lose players like that who think, well, I was happy on Xbox before I moved to PlayStation, so if it's going to be costing me more over here, I'll go back over to, to Xbox. Because I think the experience on Xbox has become so much better now, even down to the dashboard, which has got a lot cleaner and a lot better. It still could do with a bit more improvement. I'm hoping that the Xbox Series X has got, you know, a far more minimalistic way of going like the PlayStation did. But that seems like that's what is happening because that is what's happened with the progression of the Xbox One X dashboard. So I can see people shifting back. The reason I can see people not shifting back is because the first party library on the Sony front is so good that I don't think people are going to be bothered about spending $50 extra to stay with PlayStation, especially if they can make this console backward compatible all the way through to PS1. If you can make that battle compatible just by throwing your disc in and making it battle compatible on PS4, PS3, PS2 and PS1 and you're $50 more than the Xbox, no one's going to care. Nobody's going to care. Not one bit. I would pay $100 more to have a console that was fully battle compatible like that. I'd pay $500 for it because, you know, it opens up a whole world that, you know, is is no longer a faff to do. I've got to drag out my PS3, or I've got to drag out my PS2, or I've got to, you know, all my, well, I have got a PS1, but the PS2 plays PS1s anyway. Here's something I didn't know. Apparently, any PS3 can play a PS1 game. What? When did that happen? <laughs> I missed a trick here, because I saw a video of a guy showing off a... He bought a fat PS2 original... Sorry, you know, a fat PS3 original because he wanted to be able to play PS2 and PS1 games on it. And he said, well, any P any any PS2, um, sorry, any PS3 would play PS1 games anyway. And I was like, hey, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Never known that. And then he said, but only the fat, the original fat one could play the PS2 games. And that's true. That is true. So I had no idea that PS3 could play PS1 games. There you go. You learn something new even now after all these years, people. So there you are. So yeah, I'm 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 gonna be. It's gonna be very curious. I mean, we we wonder if this is why we've not heard more from PlayStation yet, uh, because if they are struggling with the manufacturing costs, then they may be holding off to the very very last minute to buy a lot of their components and then they need to decide when they're going to launch because if they're waiting for product to drop in price or the coronavirus to sort itself out so things do ease up then you know we could look at a delay there but i just don't i don't see the gazillion people that bought playstation 4s dropping and moving over to, to xbox one just because they they release a few months earlier or something i can't see it there will be a margin of people that will do it, or there'll be people like me that would buy both consoles anyway. Um, but it's going to be interesting. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think, or if you know something that I don't. But why is it why is it only people saying PS4 struggling with cost? Why are Microsoft not, Microsoft not struggling with cost? They have to buy the, the components from probably the same places or similar places and, and countries. So why is it a problem for PS4 than not Xbox? I don't understand that at all. Uh, they both seem to be holding off on each other to decide what the price is as well. Um, you know, but we shall soon find out, I suppose. I mean, we're about to enter March. The products are releasing holiday this year, so I mean, you, you, we're talking what now? Six, six months max before we're in that zone, aren't we? That would be yeah. I mean, probably five months, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, five months before five months in five months' time, we should know exactly what's happening, exactly what prices are, exactly you know what the launch titles are, all that sort of stuff. Because that's going to be that's going to be on the cusp of the launch of the actual product being available to ship out. We should be able to pre-order probably before then, if that's the case, because it's not a case of like last time where they said we're going to be announcing it at this point in time. It's like you can buy these, you know, it's, it's going to be, we are, they've already said that they will be coming on that time frame. So we should be able to pre-order a few months in advance of that, at least. So we must know over summer, really, what it is that we're pre-ordering, what it, what the prices are, what the games that are coming, 
you know, I'm not coming with. Well, there is usually bundles, to be fair. But, you know, what games are going to be available that are exclusive or not exclusive or whatever. I'm not overly sure there'll be exclusives. I think PlayStation might, PlayStation might, but how do you make a game? How do you make a first-party game? Like, let's example Horizon Zero Dawn 2 and don't put it on a PS4. Uh, you know, you, the amount of money that's going to lose you is just insane. You'd have to, I don't know, I don't know how they're going to sell all of that. They really, I really don't. I'd be more, I'd be more tempted to say that there'll be a launch title from a third party company, let's say Bethesda, with Starfield, because we know Starfield is next gen only, because they said I'm pretty sure they said that it's next gen only, and they were that's why they were working so heavily on that. So if Starfield, w let's say Starfield is a launch title for both those consoles, that's one massive reason to go out and buy a new console, new Beth new Bethesda game set in space, all these things going on, multiple planets, blah blah blah, uh, something you cannot possibly see on old gen. It's got to be on this gen. And I think that might happen uh, because they'll do something else. Like, mind you, they said they said the next Elder Scrolls was going to be next gen only as well. So I think it's more likely we'll see a third party company do that than a first party. But uh, Microsoft have already said all of their first party stuff is going to be cross platform. Uh, sorry, cross gen for at least a year or two. I think so. I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a mistake because I think you're going to be struggling to get people to buy new consoles. If people know they can play Halo 6 on the one they've got, why should they go out and spend $400 on a new console? It's like only the really keen, or only the real graphic holes <laughs> like me are going to be the people going out and buying it. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that'll have a massive impact on the speed of the sales of these things, personally. But let me know what you think, people, in the comments below. So there we are. That was my thoughts on PlayStation 5. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Why is it only PS5 and not Xbox Series X that, that seems to be the issue with this price thing? And let me know what you think about uh, games being exclusive or not being exclusive. Do you think there should be exclusives? Or do you are you happier with it being cross-platform? And then just giving us like an update for the game or a version of the game that just plays Uber on the next version, uh, on the next gen. So let, let me know in the comments below, people. Now, here's the thing. Let's move on to RPG talk, people. Baldur's Gate 3, which is... Baldur's Gate is uh, an RPG from days, days gone, people, from way back. 1990 blah. 98, something like that. It's 20 years old anyway. I think the original game is actually 21 years old now, but I think it was a 20-year anniversary at some point. Um, and the man who, who, who dis, well, created Larian Studios that brought us Divinity Original Sin and Divinity Original Sin 2, uh, has, he was on a warpath with it for a long time. And I think stalks are a strong word. <laughs> But he kind of stalked the guy who created Baldur's Gate and owns the copyright to it and all that sort of stuff. And he eventually, like, he said, I want to make the, I want to make the third one and I want to do this with it and I want to do that with it. And, you know, through all of this time, he's managed to get the guy to let Larian Studios make Baldur's Gate 3. And they hinted at it with a big sort of, uh, they, had a, they had a clip not that long ago. It was a, it was a mocap clip. It wasn't gameplay. Just sort of teasing it, you know. I mean, it's really... It is really sort of Dungeons and Dragons RPG stuff, this. So um, I'm really looking forward to if they can give us a great sort of action piece, but lots of nice loot in, lots of, you know, all the RPG bits that you want. You know, lots of loot, lots of, uh, lots of crafting, maybe. Uh, a good battle system, something that's exciting. But Larian Studios have said, and um, I'll be showing all sorts of stuff behind me when I talk about the end. Larian Studios said that they... In order to build this game, they had to throw out everything that they had and, you know, push to the side. But he says throw out everything they were doing and had and bring in all these new ideas and engines and stuff to, to do what they wanted to do with Baldur's Gate. So I, I can, I'm feeling pretty confident about the fact that it's not going to be a Divinity Original Sin 
but Baldur's Gate. It's going to be its own animal because they have kind of gone right out of their comfort zone to do what this guy's vision is for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, so I'm really stoked for it. Now, I've never played Baldur's Gate and it, it recently released, the remaster of it released on Xbox One. I can't remember when. It was a few months back, I think. It might have been longer. And you can tell that this game is from 1990, blah. You know, it's a very old game. And the, the there's in the original was obviously a PC game. So it's actually not only been remastered, but it's been widescreen. It's been freshened up. It's been, you know, cleaned up a lot. But they've also made it controller friendly for the Xbox because obviously no keyboard and mouse. But in back in the day, it was like click on the path. They all move there. Click on the path. They all move there. But there's none of that in the, the Xbox one. You, be, you literally just move the party around. But, you know, you, you look at them and you can see that they're dated. But considering when they were made, you think, bloody hell, that's pretty impressive. You know what I mean? It's like the, the sort of world and, uh, and and parties of people wandering around, all these sort of things. Probably one of the very early success stories of what could what was going to be coming for us in the future of RPG. And I think one of the big things that you notice with RPGs in days gone by is that obviously there was very little voice acting, if any, because of the space that they had to, to, to hold such information. So it was all text and reading, uh, every answer, every question, uh, books and, and things to figure out. It was all reading. It was, it, was not, uh, it was not just somebody talking at you and taking part in conversation. Me personally, I, I do not like too much reading in a game. It does get frustrating after a while, but I think that's because we've become a bit lazy as gamers anyway. And I think there was a... Oh, I've got to forget the name of the game now. But there was a game that I played, an RPG that I played... Uh... Oh, come on, Steve. <laughs> what is it? But I'm always recording. Mind blank. Absolute mind blank. Oh, it'll come back to me. But anyway, there was a game where it was kind of half and half. Like, you got a lot of voice acting and then you got... There'd be voice acting and suddenly it would just be talking again. Uh, sorry, uh, just text again. You had to read it yourself. And it was like, well... And firstly, I thought, why? Because, you know, it was a pretty new game, to be fair. And I thought, I don't understand why it's half and half. However, I did feel myself uh, slightly more connected somehow and engrossed in it without even realising it at the time. When they, when it get, went to text, I was like, oh. And then, but then I would find myself quite engrossed in reading it and, and like paying more attention to what was being said. Sometimes when it's just talked at you, you can miss half of what they're saying because you kind of just get distracted while they're going on with it. When it's on the screen, you've got to read it or you're like, oh shit, I better read it. I don't know what, you know. So I felt there was an element of, I felt a bit more connected to the game because I had to read certain parts of it. This isn't the game I was thinking of, but Pillars of Eternity is a prime example. There was a little bit of voicey stuff in there, but in the main part, that game is, is I know it's not the newest game on the, well, it's not the biggest game on the planet. Um, I'm hoping that Pillars of Eternity 2 has a bit more voice acting in it, but that game had a lot of reading in it, but it was a bit too much. Um, and then, like, if, if something comes up and it's a huge amount of text, it's like, oh. <laughs> it's like bloody homework, isn't it? It's like, oh, come on, teacher, do I have to read it out? Because <laughs> someone else read it. So, I'm very, very stoked to see what's going to happen with Baldur's Gate 3. And... I'm I'm a little bit tempted to buy the 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 one that actually the release for Xbox One, I think it's at uh, Baldur's Gate One and Two in the one pack, and hopefully I'll have shown a bit of it while I've been rambling on, and you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. Now, anyone who's uh, an, a true RPG fan won't really care about the graphics and might want to actually just give it a go to see what the early RPGs were like. They got a lot of high praise back in the day. So it'd be interesting to find out how they stand up. Chances are I'll probably hold off just to... I don't have a massive inkling to buy them. I Watching the, the clip that I probably showed you, I was kind of like, well, I can see it being a novelty at first, but then getting really annoying <laughs> because I'm just used to something more. Uh, but I don't know. I might get the fancy for it and just to do a few episodes on the channel. If I see it at a cheap enough price, I might give it a go. Interestingly, I don't remember anybody saying it was on PS4. It might just be an Xbox thing. 
Um, now, it's worth mentioning also that they haven't actually mentioned, or they haven't actually announced that Baldur's Gate 3 is on console yet. They've just said that, that Baldur's Gate 3 is coming, and it's definitely coming to PC. However, Larian Studios are renowned for... They build the product, it goes on PC, it then launches on console, blah them out a month later. That's how we got Divinity, that's how we got Divinity 2. Or Divinity Original Sin, shall we say. So I I would be in I would be like you don't. As a games company, you don't say, right, we'll just do it for PC and then forget about the millions and millions of copies we could have sold to to the PS4 and, and Xbox people. Like it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I have no doubt that they are building that game with with console in mind for after it's launched on PC. So it'll be interesting. The only thing that might hold it back is there is a lot of, like, if they go full-on RPG, then there may be an issue doing it with controller. Like, um, you know, there are the big RPGs that or MMOs that are on World of Warcraft, prime example, it's still only on. PC because I think there's so many keyboard and mouse things to do. Try to fit them all onto a, a controller is just a bloody nightmare. But that said, I don't know. I mean, it could be someone that I've never played it, so it could be one of you says, "Oh no, hang on, I play it on a controller on my PC." You know, I don't know. But I, my understanding of it is that some of them are just so vast in the amount of options that a controller can't do it. So you know, but that said. Microsoft have made noises. In fact, they might have released it already, but they were making noises about releasing a keyboard and mouse for the Xbox anyway. So it could be that they have all that sort of stuff in mind. You know, like you can buy the game, but you will need a keyboard and mouse to play it. And I think that's the way Microsoft are going. I think they want their console to be, you can play it like a PC if you want, or you can just play it with your controller. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you can get a PC of that power for that price, I mean, you know, which is effectively what it is. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing. Now, we're going to find out. The reason I'm mentioning it is because they're about to announce the, or show off the first gameplay of Baldur's Gate 3. Because to this point, all we've seen is a, a bit of cutscene, as it were. Very nice looking cutscene as well, I have to be said. But it is happening, people, at PAX East on the 27th of February, which is next week. And it is happening on. Well, it's happening at 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m. here, Greenwich Mean Time. And it's happening at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on the 27th of February. Where are we now? 20... 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. What's that Thursday? Tomorrow's 22nd, isn't it? No, what are we talking about? Yeah, tomorrow's the 22nd. So, yeah, so 22nd, 23rd, 24th Monday, 25th Tuesday, 26th Wednesday. Yeah, 27th is Thursday. It's all right, I'm a bit slow, people. I was never very good at maths. <laughs> for a programmer, it's quite concerning, really, you know. But I've never, you know, adding up, it's not, not asked for often, and usually I just use a calculator anyway. <laughs> and apparently you'll be able to watch it on the YouTube machine. So I'll be looking out for... Either Larian Studios doing it or some PAX East YouTube channel. But they will be streaming live as they show it off. So, yeah, I'm really going to be interested in watching that. So let me know in the comments below if you're keeping your eyeballs open for that. And uh, hopefully this time next week we can have a bit of a chat about it. Because I'll be able to, hopefully, if they put a decent video up, I'll be able to show it behind me while I'm chatting about it and chatting to you guys about it. So, yeah, uberly stoked for that. And in the meantime, if I get an itch to grab... Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 than I might do, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm into that at the minute. I'm into my Dragon Age and, and Chaos Bane and stuff. But yes, let's see what happens on Thursday, people. Well, there you are. That's it. That's all I had for you, people. That's all I had for you. I shall say it to you once again, and I shall say it no more. Flaggins up to you all. I hope you have a fantastic Friday and weekend, even though the weather's really rubbish here in the UK. If you're somewhere else like Hawaii or somewhere in America, in the deep south... <laughs> Well, maybe it's nice and cosy warm, then you're all fine. Uh, but I hope your weekends turn out to be awesome with lots of gaming. Let me know in the comments below about any of the things that I have been talking about this very evening. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you all once again in this vlog of mine. And I shall see you all next time. Take it easy, folks. Bye.